Psalm 52. Ajay Shanais, number 52. When you count the wounds, pull up the Lord. Count me, count me. When you count up those who trust his word, count me, count me. When you count up those who are saved by grace, count me, count me. Who are found in Christ a hiding place, count me, count me. When you count up those who do the right, count me, count me. Who are walking in the gospel light, count me, count me. When you count up those who forward press, count me, count me. Who shall gain the crown of righteousness, count me, count me. Count me with the children of a heavenly king. Count me with the servants who will service bring. Count me with the ransom who is praises sing. Count me, count me. Spirit said. 
Today we're going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Proverbs. The Proverbs. Chapter 14. Chapter 14. Every wise woman buildeth her house but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. A scorner seeketh wisdom, and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor is hated even of his own neighbor, but the rich hath many friends. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. Do they not err that devise evil? But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. 
The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. In the multitude of people is the king's honor, but in the want of people is the destruction of the prince. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker, but he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in his death. Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causeth shame. Chapter 15 A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord, how much more than the hearts of the children of men. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. The way of the slothful man is an hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made plain. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Without counsel purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counsellors they are established. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season, how good is it! The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You see.
training tonight. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people. Thank you, Lord, because every time we come, your spirit speaks to us. We're asking, Lord, that tonight, whatever you say, as father to children, Lord, as Savior, to those who are saved, and the Spirit of God speaking to us as our guide. We're asking, Lord, that the desire to hear you and the desire to be obedient to you and the power, the strength, the grace to go forth and do what you want us to do. You grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Help us not to be absent-minded, but Lord, to focus on your word and to receive everything, not as the word of man, but as the word of God in Jesus' name. Equip us, empower us, energize us, encourage us, lead and guide us to win souls into the kingdom in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Luke chapter 19. And we're looking at a very familiar passage of scripture. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through to 10. Let's look at verse 1. In verse 1, it tells us, Luke chapter 19, verse 1, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. In verse 2, it says, And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Verse 3 tells us, it says, And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. As you think about Zacchaeus, he had been hearing about Christ. But hearing about Christ, he had never seen Christ. Although there was nobody with him to talk to him and to enlighten him, there was a desire in his heart that he would see Jesus Christ. There was a crowd. And even though there was a crowd, he still wanted to see the Lord Jesus Christ, who he was. At this time, Jesus was passing through Jericho. And this was the last time he will pass through Jericho. He was moving on very quickly and fast unto his uh, crucifixion. And now when Zacchaeus knew that Jesus Christ was in town, there was something within him that led him, that stirred him up, that spurred him, wanting to see the Lord. You see, evangelism will be effective when in the hearts of the people, before we get to them, there's a stirring, there's a passion, there's a desire. They even want to know about this Jesus Christ. That's why the church should be very prayerful. As we're prayerful, the Spirit of God will prepare the mind of the people. It will stir them up. It will give them the desire. It will give them the know-how. How they will have somebody to talk to them. There are people like that that pray and say, Lord, if you are there and if I've missed the way, if I'm not in the right way, send somebody to me that will teach me the right way of the Lord. And so was Zacchaeus, we find in verse 4, it says in verse 4, and he ran up before him. You see, he took action. The Lord had not even spoken to him. He had not heard any message from any of the apostles or anyone, but the desire was so great in him that he ran forward and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was to pass that way. Then in verse 5, we're told that when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him. When Jesus came to the place, he stopped, he looked up, and he saw him, and he said unto him, Zacchaeus. He knew his name. You see, if we're going to effectively win the laws at this time, just like we had 
last um, Thursday, there is the power that is on the YouTube, maybe not the one you had in your district, but the power and the purpose of Pentecost. When we have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will give us insight. The Holy Ghost will give us understanding. You will, you will put the nail, you will hammer the nail on the head. You will not be bitching about the bush, but Jesus Christ, he knew him and said, Zacchaeus, that's the watch of knowledge, that he knew his name even before they interacted at all. You remember Nathaniel uh, that said, can the good thing come out of Israel? And when eventually Philip brought him, Jesus said, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no girl. And he said, how did you know me? Where did you meet me? He said, when you were under that tree, before Philip spoke to you, I knew you. That convinced the man when you are talking to people and you have real knowledge and real understanding from the Lord, you are not glued to your notes or whatever you have written, but you are able to speak spontaneously and you speak to them directly. And it's exactly where they are at in their personal life, it will catch them, they will pay attention. And so Jesus said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. Day, I must abide at thy house. In verse 6, we're told, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Right there, you understand, something had happened already. It was in the public. You see, this man, Zacchaeus, he didn't have to cry. He didn't have to roll on the ground. He didn't have to mourn. He didn't have to, you know, shed crocodile tears. In his own heart, he was so happy that he had seen the Lord Jesus Christ and he received him joyfully. And as many as received him, received Christ to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God, even though those that believe on his name. And then, in fact, we are told in verse 7, verse 7 says, says and when they saw it they murmured they all murmured they were not saved they murmured they were sinners themselves they murmured and they were religious traditionalists themselves and they murmured they didn't understand spiritual things they didn't understand the relationship between the savior and the sinner they didn't understand the purpose why christ came to the world they were fleshly they were carnal they were they were natural people and they murmured saying he was gone to be guest with a man Man that is a sinner if they had known the mind of Christ they would have known I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance and Jesus came to this man and he said I'm going to abide in your house that was the purpose why he came if we are fulfilling the purpose why we came people can oppose us people may contradict us and people may criticize us because they do not know why we are here and they do not know why we have come but Jesus knew why he came and therefore he did not answer them you're not going to waste your time you're not going to waste your life answering the people that do not know the purpose why you are ministering or the purpose why you are evangelizing and Zacchaeus himself did not allow all these people that criticized to come between him and Christ if anyone is going to be saved you are not going to allow those opposers you are not going to allow those religious people you're not going to allow anyone to come between you and Christ if you are going to move on in the Christian faith and if you're going to be sanctified if you're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost if you are passionately seeking the Lord that you want everything the Lord has for you you're not going to allow anybody any carnal person natural person sinful person backsliding person anyone to stand between you and Christ and so Zacchaeus did not allow any of these people to stand between him and Christ and he said in spite of their listening in spite of the comments they have passed he said in verse 8 in verse 8 he says and Zacchaeus stood and said unto unto the Lord behold Lord the half of my goods I give to the poor 
you see this man the presence of christ had converted him the presence of christ had made the power of christ to come into his life and already you can see the transformation and you can see the power of the grace of God turning him around and he's saying for my goods I give to the poor and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation I restore him fourfold in verse 9 then Jesus and Jesus said unto him this day is salvation come to this house this day there are people who say you cannot be sure about being saved until eventually you get to heaven. There are people that say that you cannot have assurance of salvation. You'll be doubting and doubting, am I saved, am I not saved? But Jesus gave assurance to the man and said, This day is salvation come to this house. How? Where the Savior is, salvation must be there. I, the Savior, must abide in your house. And as Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer, came to his house, then salvation also came for us for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. Because all the descendants of Abraham, all the Jews, they have the privilege. Salvation is of the Jews and also of the Gentiles. Because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And now Jesus revealed the purpose why he came. And the purpose why we're here. And the purpose he has brought us unto himself so that as his hands, his feet, his mouth, and his members of his body, we can go out into the world and fulfill the purpose of Christ, what Christ would have been doing if Christ were here today. Look at verse 10. It says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The Son of Man is come to the world. The Son of Man is come to Israel. The Son of Man is come to Jericho. The Son of Man is come into this city. Anywhere Jesus goes to and the church is placed there and the church is planted there, the purpose of Christ, having that church, having his church in any city is so that sinners will be saved and those who are saved will abide with the Lord. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. We're looking at the message responding truthfully to Christ's transforming love. Responding truthfully to Christ's transforming love. There are three points we're looking at. Number one, the Savior's transforming love for the penitent. The Savior's transforming love for the penitent. Number two, the sincere, transparent love for the poor. Sincere, transparent love for the poor. Number three, the shepherd's transferable love in his people the shepherds trans, uh, transferable love in his people let's come to number one number one is the savior's transforming love for the penitent it tells us in luke chapter 19 verse 5 and when jesus came to the place that is the place where he, he was that is the place where zacchaeus the sinner was and he has come to, to the place where you were when you were a sinner he came to the place and he said behold I stand at your door and I knock and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will call me and there are sinners still outside today common sinners habitual sinners hardened sinners terrible sinners um, whatever sinner any sinner because you understand all sinners if they are not saved will perish finally a person might be just an average sinner 
it might be high class sinner it might be hardened sinner it might be terrible sinner or it might just be an ordinary sinner and who is uh, doing the best he can in the world without jesus christ and without the salvation of the lord he cannot be saved and so we need to reach out to everybody and as we reach out to everybody we bring christ to the place where they are it may be in their houses it may be in their offices it may be in the it may be in the community it may be in their village as we state village evangelism it may be in their town as we go to their stadiums and then we stage mass evangelism crusade but the point is they may not come uh, to the headquarters church and they may not come to your house but you go to them and jesus came to the place and he looked up and he saw him and you saw him there were crowds there but he pinpointed the sinner you might be talking to a crowd you might be talking to thousands of people but there is a him a he there is a she or her that you are pinpointing and you are talking to and you do not want any zacchaeus any sinner to be lost in the crowd and he said unto him zacchaeus there are people sometimes when the preacher is preaching he might point like that and the spirit of god can direct that pointing to a particular zacchaeus there or to a particular sinner there and it is the way of the lord to pinpoint a sinner and to say you need salvation you need the lord and you need the peace of mind and then it says make haste and come down you have to do something you cannot remain there on the tree and think salvation will come there you have to show that you want the savior and you want a salvation make haste and calm down make haste we tell them today is the day of salvation we tell them tomorrow may be too late we tell them you do not know when you will breathe your last and so as you have opportunity today receive him turn away from your sin and come to the lord for today i must abide at thy house you understand salvation from the sight of god he must from the side of God he will from the side of God he wants everyone to be saved and he's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance but it's not only the side of God there is the side of man man must receive Christ man must receive his salvation and man must take him to the heart and take him home and man must be willing to abide with him and remain with him there are people that only stress the first part god wants everybody to be saved he will save those who are appointed for salvation is sovereignty but you know man's part is there make haste and come down do something and take me to your house i must abide at your house today look at luke chapter 5 in luke chapter 5 verse 31 Luke chapter 5, reading from verse 31, and Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Verse 32, the purpose why he came, I came not to call the righteous, I came not to call the self-righteous I, I came not to call the self-sufficient I came not to call the religious the people who are religious and they think their religion will take them to heaven their personal efforts will take them to heaven and their good works will take them to heaven I don't I didn't come for them I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance 
I came to call sinners, hold on, I didn't call them to happiness, I've not come to call sinners to joy, I've not come to call sinners to superficiality, I've not come to call sinners to another religion, I've not come to call sinners to remain in their sins, I came to call sinners to repentance. And when we're talking to sinners, we must make them to understand that's the plan of God that's the purpose of God he came he has come and he died on the cross of Calvary and it is so that sinners will repent it tells us in um, Matthew chapter chapter 6 we're reading from verse 33 Matthew chapter 6 we're reading from verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness abandon the old righteousness abandon the fleshly righteousness abandon the decayed righteousness abandon the unacceptable personal self-made righteousness and seek the kingdom of God like Zacchaeus sought to see the Savior, the King of the kingdom. Seek that kingdom of God and abandon every other thing and say, it's Jesus I want, it's a salvation I want and say that this is all I want and then it's righteousness. You understand that sin cannot abide with God and God will not abide with sin. You must repent and then the grace of God will walk in your heart and your life you seek his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you his salvation will be added unto you after repentance and then after consecration his sanctification added unto you and after seeking the Lord and the fire power of the Holy Ghost all that will be added unto you and all the other things that might have uh, held you back that might have delayed you I don't want that now I still want to get married I don't want to get saved now I, still, I want to make a, a particular profession I want to make this I want to make that all those things will be added unto you as you come unto the Lord and it is that that comes to us as penitents as repentant people and then our lives are transformed and we're changed and then we have that love now within us it tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 1 Ephesians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 1 it says be ye therefore followers of God as dear children when you come to the Lord and you become a saved soul and you are purchased and you are redeemed and your sins are purged and they're taken away you become a dear child of god and you are not static you are not in darkness you are no more what you used to be you are now followers of god in verse 2 it tells us in verse 2 and walk in love and walk in love look at zacchaeus as soon as christ said make haste and come down i must abide in your house today he came down and then he told the Lord, he said, you know, Lord, I've been selfish. Nobody told him about that. His conscience just woke up and said, I've been stingy. And I've been thinking about myself alone, self-centered. But now, I never remembered the poor. I said that they are poor because they are not hardworking. They are poor because they are not, uh, they're not um, uh, doing what they ought to do. But now I remember them and half of my goods. And remember the Bible says, and he was rich. And he was rich. That means he had quite a lot. But now he said, I'm going to divide everything I have into two. And I'm going to give 50% to the poor. Obviously, this was a changed man. Obviously, this was a man that had the love of God transform, transferred into his son. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us. And has given himself for us and an offering and a sacrifice to God for his way smelling savor. When the love of God comes into us, we're transformed, we're changed. 
and all the habits of the past they are totally taken away a renewal comes a reformation comes a transformation comes and the new love of god makes us to act in new ways and to give when we have always been asking other people i want to get i want to get all that is taken away and the heart of love that wants to bless other people that love comes to us it tells us in first john chapter 3 verse 16 first john chapter 3 reading from verse 16 it says hereby perceive with the love of god how do you know somebody is saved how do you know somebody is born again how do you know somebody is now a child of God and following after the Lord? How do you know somebody has met the Lord and meeting the Lord in a redemptive way has transformed his life? Here is it. Here, hereby perceive with the love of God because Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And here Zacchaeus was willing to lay down half of his possession for the poor it wasn't something that somebody had to be schooling him and drilling him and dinning it into his ears but it was a transformation that came inside him he was looking for the poor now uh, to help them he was looking for the poor to provide for them and that is what happens when the love of god comes into our hearts well his particular peculiar sin was that he was self-centered he was selfish he was stingy and then that peculiar characteristic that simple characteristic now turned around and a new life came maybe your own peculiar um, sin wasn't that before you were saved but whatever it was when christ comes to you and you meet christ and you're truly repentant and you're truly penitent that peculiar sin that used to be the mark the whole mark of your life that thing will turn around and change look at john chapter 8 reading from verse 11 in john chapter 8 reading from verse 11 she said no man lord and jesus said unto her neither do i condemn thee the past is forgiven and i'm willing to forget the past i'm willing to erase the past i'm willing to blot out all your past life neither do i condemn you there is no condemnation now for them who have met the lord and who are walking they're no more walking in the flesh they are walking in in the spirit neither do i condemn thee go and sin no more go and sin no more if you were an adulterer go and sin no more if you were a fornicator go and sin no more if you were a thief go and sin no more if you were a liar a deceiver go and sin no more if you are a if you were a covetous man a covetous woman go and sin no more when you come to christ and christ comes to dwell in you there's a change of life if any man if any woman if any person be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away and behold all things are become new it tells us in first peter chapter 2 reading from verse 24 first peter chapter 2 reading from verse 24 who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree he took away he carried away our sins as he died on the cross that we being dead to sins that's what it does that's what the sacrifice of christ the salvation from christ that's what it does in our lives makes us dead to sins and it is not that somebody is reasoning with us psychologically or trying to convince us and persuade us once christ comes in 
the crucified Christ, once Christ comes in, the converting Christ, once Christ comes in, Christ, the redeeming Christ, he makes a change and he makes us dead to the sins of the past and that we should live unto righteousness. Zacchaeus understood that in a moment of time and to live now unto righteousness by whose tribes ye were healed. By whose tribes ye were healed. All the wounds of the past, all the scars of the past, all the reproach of the past, everything is taken away. He heals the soul. He heals the spirit, he heals the body, he heals the personality, and there is a total change. Let's come now to point number two. In point number two is the sincere, transparent love for the poor. The sincere, transparent love for the poor. You see, when salvation came, Zacchaeus was not waiting now that the poor people will come and be begging him. The poor people will be his slaves and they'll be prostrating on the ground and then they will be saying they'll be honoring him, exalting him, they'll be flattering him before he can give them anything at all no not at all he said he was the person now that will be searching for the poor he'll be looking for the poor here is love here is transparent love here is sincere transparent love for the poor he says in luke chapter 19 reading from verse 8 luke chapter 19 verse 8 and zacchaeus church and said unto the lord behold lord he called him lord as he was a rich man nobody was his controller nobody was his director he looked down on everybody any preacher propagator of um, of religion he looked down on them they don't have money that's why they're religious and they don't have uh, what i have the wealth i have that's why they're going after religion but now he looked up to the lord he said you are my lord you are my lord he wanted to see him just to see him uh, who he was before but now he said behold lord the lord who knows my name uh, without telling him uh, the lord who knows my heart if i'm telling a lie now the lord who knows me through and through and i have to be transparent before him the lord who knows my down sitting who knows my uprising the lord who knows my thought afar off the lord who knows me in the dark and he knows me in the light the lord who is conversant with my past life and my present utterance he says behold lord lord you can look at it you can examine my heart to see what i'm seeing behold and tell behold lord the half of my goods i give to the poor this is my plan now spontaneously i didn't have this in mind before as you came and you saw me and you mentioned my name as you came and said that you come down make haste and come down as you said you will abide in my house a change came salvation is an instantaneous experience salvation is a definite experience and the work of grace it was done immediately in his heart and that made him now some people say i don't know how to consecrate i don't know how to make promise to god when christ comes to your heart abides in your heart and lives in your heart and he now takes over the lordship and the control and the direction of your life he knows what you ought to do he knows what you have been neglecting he knows your past life he knows the stinginess of the past he knows the self-centeredness of the past Christ from within will spoil you, will alert you, and will stir you up as to what direction, new direction you ought to go now. And so 
it came spontaneously as he got saved instantaneously he said half of my good i give to the poor and look at uh, jeremiah chapter 22 verse 13 jeremiah chapter 22 we're reading from verse 13 woe to unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong that uses his neighbor's service without wages and giveth him not for his work Zacchaeus was convicted He's been doing this. He just wanted to get rich at all costs at the expense of the poor, at the expense of their family, at the expense of their personality. He didn't care whether the poor people were well paid or not when they served him. He didn't care whether the poor people had responsibilities at home over their children, over their family. He didn't care. All he wanted is, I want to be rich. And since I have the power and I have the position, I can make use of their services without uh, paying them adequately. And now he realized that and he realized his past life and he said, Lord, behold now, half of my goods I give unto the poor. In Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49 it says behold this was the iniquity of thy sister sodom the iniquity of sodom what was their sin pride fullness of bread and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy when somebody is stingy, when somebody is self-centered, when somebody is self-indulgent, when somebody oppresses the poor, and when somebody does not think of the happiness of the poor, the poor want to be happy too. And the, uh, the paupers, they want to be fulfilled too. And happiness does not only belong to, you know, high people, great people, prosperous people. The Lord wants happiness for everyone. And when somebody does not think of the happiness and the stability and the provision and the fulfillment of the poor, it's like Sodom. And God said, here was their iniquity. They had pride and they were kind of uh, oppressed people. They had abundance of idleness and fullness of bread. They had more than enough to eat without thinking of those who are perishing of hunger. And they did not strengthen the hands of the poor and needy. And Zacchaeus recognized, he said, I have not been thinking of those poor people. I even thought it's like they are not existing, they are not anywhere. I live my life indifferent of anyone, independent of everyone. I live my life just to make myself happy and to make myself fulfilled. And I never thought the poor people were somewhere. He now remembered it's like being a sodomite is like being uh, buried or immersed in the scene of Sodom and he said Lord now that you came to my house not only coming to my house but coming to my heart a change is happening right now and half of my goods I give unto the poor he was now willing to stretch his hand and scatter what he had unto others look at psalm 112 psalm 112 we're reading from verse 6 in psalm 112 reading from verse 6 surely it shall not be moved forever the righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance you know when you repent and you come to the lord and then a change happens in your life 
and your prayer is even transformed and changed and your prayer is not only give me do this for me help me deliver me heal me provide for me get this for me you've got now you come back again and selfishly you pray give me and deliver me and set me free even when you are not sick heal me deliver me and you never think about other people when a change comes and when transformation comes then it says you are righteous and the righteousness of Christ is transmitted and transferred unto you and it changes your perspective and then it says you'll be in everlasting remembrance look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says he shall not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is fixed trusting in the Lord you know Zacchaeus as the people murmured and they said Christ had gone to be in the house to stay in the house or to visit a man that is a sinner he wasn't afraid again they'll tell on me they'll tell the bad life i lived before he wasn't afraid of that anymore there are people they say they are born again they say they are converted they're still afraid they will tell on me and they will reveal what my life had been in the past uh, it says when you are born again and when you are righteous and when now you have come to the Lord and things have totally changed he shall not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is fixed his trust in, in the Lord look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says his heart is established he shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies now verse 9 verse 9 tells us he has dispersed he has given to the poor that's righteousness he has dispersed he has given to the poor if we want to show that we're real children of God we're born again we don't spend all our money on ourselves I give my tithe I give my offering go beyond that and then the poor around you the indigenous among you the people that have nothing to eat nothing to wear nothing to help themselves around you the grace of God the love of God and the penetrating sacrificial self-denial will show in your life it says he has dispersed he has given to the poor his righteousness endured forever what you do to the poor as part of your righteousness are you open your hand open your heart to reach out to the poor that's part of your righteousness his righteousness endure it forever his honor shall be exalted with honor let's come back to luke we're reading from verse chapter 19 and reading from verse 8 luke chapter 19 we're reading from verse 8 it says the and Zacchaeus stood and said unto unto the Lord behold Lord he wasn't talking to Peter he wasn't talking to any of the apostles he wasn't talking to his accusers and say behold okay you are saying that I'm a great sinner and Christ is going to go home with me and then he'll keep the Lord standing there and then he's talking to the apostles so he's talking to the sinners and he's saying I tell you this is what I'm going to do he didn't care whether the people understood or didn't understand they accepted they didn't accept he had no business with them it was to the Lord that he said, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man, any man, the downtrodden, any man, the defenseless, any man, the one who did not, should, did not have anybody to defend them or to protect them, if I have taking anything from anyone the widow the fatherless 
the young and have taken the property their father willed for them because they have no strength and because they have no defender no advocate if i have taken any sin from any man by false accusation obviously he himself knew that there were times he had put upon people false accusation and with that false accusation lies will be there false accusation then there will be deception false accusation the greed was there and through that false accusation and fraud will be there false accusation anything i've taken from anyone any man i'm going to check up my records i keep records i know what i've done and my conscience bears me witness it says i restore him fourfold he might have forgotten the case he might have written it off as a poor man as the fatherless as the widow as the one that trod in society they know that they cannot get at me because there's a barrier between me, the rich man, and those people I defrauded. But now I'm not even want, I'm not asking them to come to come and ask me. I shall pay what I owe them voluntarily myself. I'm going to pay them not only that, all the interest that shall have accrued to the principal that I cheated them on, I took from them. I'm going to restore everything. Brothers and sisters, this is real evidence of salvation. Without anybody putting pressure on him, without anybody coming to say, you remember me and you remember what you did to my father you remember what you did to my parents made them so depressed and so stressed in fact they died prematurely without anybody coming to Zacchaeus like that he said I'll do it voluntarily myself if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation I restore him fourfold that's the conscience coming up to say look at what you did look at what you did when people talk about restitution they talk about restitution only that if uh, if they have second wife or if they have second husband they say they are making restitution that's right i bought what you stole i bought other people's certificate I but the honor you, spo you stole and the identity you stole from another person to get work. I but all those things that are fraudulent that you have done. And then there are people who even claim they are Christians and their consciences are seared as with a hot iron. And they do not have any conscience to make right what was wrong in the past. But Zacchaeus is teaching us a lesson that where there is genuine salvation, then there's sincere, transparent love for the Lord himself, for the word of God, and for the poor. It tells us in Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 15. Romans chapter 2, we're reading from verse 15. It tells us here, it says we show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. The Lord has put conscience, the conscience in everyone's inner man. And when we've done something wrong, except you silence that conscience to your own destruction. If the conscience is allowed to alert you and to remind you, you'll say that is wrong. And if you're a real child of God, you'll stop that thing that is wrong and you will make amends even if nobody knew. It says we show the work of the law, reaching in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing them or else excusing one another 
the conscience will bear witness and then you will know here is what you are to correct now here is what you are to judge now in verse 16 in verse 16 it says in the day when god shall judge the secrets of men by jesus christ according to my gospel now zacchaeus had no hidden secret a secret sin a secret fraud a secret search a secret deception if i correct that the house will scatter if i correct that if i make that open the roof will fall down if i correct that i will lose my job if i correct that if i make it open i lose my honor i lose my dignity the chaos had nothing of that to think of all they wanted to have is a clear conscience between him and god and then he'll be free on the day of judgment it tells us in first john chapter 3 verse 20 first john chapter 3 reading from verse 20 here it says for if our heart condemn us god is greater than our heart and he knows all things if as you are preaching holiness as you are preaching righteousness you mention righteousness you mention holiness and then your heart condemns you uh-huh holiness holiness without which no man shall see the lord so you are going to see the lord i about this dirty thing i about this shady thing i i about this defiling thing i about this pornography i about this if our heart condemn us god is greater than our heart and knoweth all things in verse 21 it says beloved if our heart condemn us not if our conscience not silenced if our conscience not seared with a hot iron if our conscience fresh and new and at a large if our conscience condemn us not then we have confidence towards god we have confidence we're children of god we have confidence there's nothing we're hiding we have confidence that the blood of jesus has cleansed us and we're not covering up anything he wants us to keep that kind of conscience in first timothy chapter 4 reading from verse 1 first timothy chapter 4 reading from verse 1 it tells us in first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils then in verse 2 it says in verse 2 speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron that's a dangerous life to live that a person lives and survives by lying that a person keeps honor and dignity and keeps his position by lying in hypocrisy that a person has forgotten what change what transformation salvation actually makes and he only thinks about salvation when he comes to the church out there he doesn't think of salvation he doesn't live the saved life he does like the people of the world do and speaks lies in hypocrisy to cover up might cover up in any way having their conscience seared with a hot iron and that is what Zacchaeus came out of and he said Lord behold you can investigate you can examine you can look and x-ray my heart and my conscience Lord half of my goods I give unto the poor and I do that sincerely I feel sorry I have not been thinking about them 
and I also feel so sorry for the people I've defrauded and for the way I've lived my life oppressing people and cheating people and if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation I restore him fourfold it tells us in first Timothy chapter 3 verse 9 first Timothy chapter 3 we're reading from verse 9 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 9 Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience Holding the mystery of the faith The result of the faith The salvation given to us by grace through faith By faith through grace All that salvation that comes All the mystery that comes And the godliness that comes And the doctrine of the kingdom the mystery of the kingdom holding all that in a pure conscience my brother my sister if our hearts are not pure if our conscience is not pure if our mind is not pure we cannot say we are holding the mystery of the faith the godliness that comes by faith the doctrine of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ we're not say, we cannot say we're holding that by faith if we do not have a pure conscience because there is something covered somewhere there is something hidden somewhere there is something you are protecting everywhere i hope uh, they are not uh, hacking uh, into my phone into my system uh, into my ipad into my electronic system i hope nobody has come here i hope nobody knows the pin number that you will open and see what i'm hiding there your conscience is not pure you need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, no secret, there's nothing hidden. My heart is pure. My conscience is pure. All my actions, I do with a pure conscience. And it is not an ignorant conscience. It's not a silenced conscience. It's not a seared conscience. You're pure and you're free and you're open and you're transparent. You have that transparent love. For the lord and for the family and for the children of god and the transparent love for all people that's what the lord requires that will have sincere will have transparent love for everyone we come to point number three now in point number three we're looking at the shepherd's transferable love in his people when we come to the Lord, He transfers His love into our hearts. And He makes that possible so that like He is, so we will be as well. We're coming to Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. That was his love. That was his mission. That was his commitment. That was his commission. And that was his vision. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He has transferred that to us. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, And he called his ten servants, that what ten, that number ten represents the whole, represents all the body of Christ, represents all the members of his body, represents all those who have tasted of the grace of God, of the salvation of the Lord. He called all his servants and he delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. He said to the young, Occupy till I come. He said to the old, Occupy till I come. He said to the members, Occupy till I come. He said to the ministers, Occupy till I come. 
here is what Christ would have been doing if he were here on earth at this time seeking to save the lost and he says I pass that on to you is no more here we are members of his body and bone of his bone flesh of his flesh we're now his hands we're now his mouth we're now his feet and we're now the representatives of his love and we're to carry him everywhere and we're to go to the sinners like he went to the sinners and show them the salvation of the Lord and now he says I came to seek and to save that which was lost and you are now to do the same thing and you are to occupy until he comes he transfers the duty the responsibility the commission the vision and the mission has transferred unto us john chapter 15 reading from verse 12 john chapter 15 verse 12 this is my commandment the ever present commandment the ever fresh demand this is my commandment that ye love one another how as i have loved you the love of his heart is what he has transferred unto us the love that he had is what he's now transferring and it says it was love that moved me it was compassion that moved me and it was mercy that moved me it was not willing that any should perish that moved me and i transfer the same to you that that same love that moved me will move you that same compassion that moved me will move you that when you see anyone you will not be willing that this one should perish and this same love i have i transfer unto you in verse 13 verse 13 says greater love has no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends verse 14 in verse 14 yeah my friends if you do whatsoever i command you what has he commanded occupy till i come and you're the friends of christ and you're in fellowship with christ and you have the love of christ if you do whatsoever i have commanded you it tells us in first john chapter 3 reading from verse 16 first john chapter 3 verse 16 hereby perceive with the love of god you cannot say i love god i love god if we cannot perceive if we cannot see if we cannot tell if it is not visible if it is not practical hereby perceive with the love of god because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down he has transferred that love into our hearts and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren in verse 17 it says but also as this was good and says his brother have need and says the poor have need and says the indigent the paupers have need and shorteth up his bowels of compassion from him how dwelleth the love of god in him verse 18 brethren little children let us not love in words only neither in tongue only but in deed and in truth when you love you think of the needs of others you'll think of the feelings of others you'll think of what makes others happy what makes others fulfilled 
what encourages others, what edifies others, what builds up others, and what moves others to also have love. You provoke them to love by the love you show unto them. And you bring sinners to salvation by the love you express unto them. My little children, believers, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. First John chapter 4, reading from verse 16. First John chapter 4, reading from verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. He transfers that love into our hearts, and we act on the basis of love every time. On the basis of love to our neighbors, and the greatest love we can manifest is to show them the way of salvation, Giving them food is good, but food will perish. Giving them drink is good, but drink will eventually be useless when they die. Giving them clothes, that's great, but clothes will be of no value if they are not saved and they go to hell. Giving them material things, that's great for the time being, but all that will not do any good if they die without salvation we have love we manifest love if we show them the way of salvation and they have redemption salvation that transforms their lives and changes their lives and they know they are on their way to heaven and they have the grace of god in their lives here we are, it says we have known and we have believed the love that God has to us. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Verse 17, in verse 17, here, herein is a love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world as he is selfless as he is sacrificial as he is loving as he is wanting sinners to be saved as he is open and transparent and going everywhere he ought to go for sinners to be saved as he is so are we in this world verse 18 it says there is no fear in law the lord jesus did not fear the pharisees or the sadducees he loved them and he answered their questions even when they were hypocritical he still answered their question wanting to bring them into the salvation of the lord he loved nicodemus he told him he must be born again he loved the young greek children that came and he says what will i do to inherit eternal life do this, do this, all that I've done, uh, what lack I yet? And the Lord looking at him, loved him and said, if you'll be perfect, here is what to do. He loves everyone. He didn't fear the rich. He didn't fear the poor. He didn't fear anyone. And when we have the love of Christ, our love will overcome any kind of uh, reservation in us. And we don't have to we don't have to pretend and we don't have to do anything that will send another message to the other fellow if we love them if we love them we just face them and tell them what we need to tell them there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear has torment if you make somebody to be afraid of you, there is an element of torment. 
and you cannot minister to somebody when you are tormenting them it says because fear has torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love in verse 19 it says in verse 19 we're loving because he first loved us we love him because he first loved us verse 20 in verse 20 it says if a man say i love god i love god i love god and hateth his brother and hateth members of the church and hateth his neighbor and says if he will perish let him perish i will not tell him about salvation he's a wicked man he's a cruel woman I'll not let him know, I'll, let her, I'll not let her know the way to reconcile with God. Let her die, let him die in his crime and perish. That's not love. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Verse 21. In verse 21, and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God, he who loveth God, love his brother also. That's the love of God. He doesn't want anyone to perish, and you too, if you have the love of God, you don't want anyone to perish. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. In 2 Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 9, here we're told the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards what not willing that any should perish. That's your heart if you're a child of God, not willing that any should perish. You are not dodging evangelism, not willing that any should perish. You are not hiding yourself somewhere. Uh, when brothers, sisters knock on your door, we're going for evangelism now. You keep quiet there. Children don't make any noise. I don't want anybody to know I'm at home. What's that? You want the sinners to perish and you have a lot to do. Today, I'm going to take it to be a free day. I need to do this and do this. I own that and I own the other one out. You want them to perish? What if everybody does like that? It says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. There are people you can only reach. I cannot reach them. There are people she can only reach and you cannot reach them. It is when everybody does what he ought to do that then will fulfill the mind of God that is not willing that any shall perish but that all shall come to repentance. I pray this love of God will be in every one of our hearts in Jesus' name. Will be in your heart. Will be in your heart. Will be in my heart. And every day will demonstrate that love as we preach, as we minister in love, persuasively to sinners all around in Jesus' name. Verse 17, in verse 17 of that same chapter, it says, Ye therefore, beloved, seen, ye know these things, all that we have heard now, ye know these things, and you know the nearness, imminence of the coming of Christ, ye know these things before. It says, Beware, lest ye also be led away, will the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. Will be steadfast unto the end in jesus name and our conscience we need to bring that before the lord and have a clear conscience a clean conscience a sensitive conscience that will not be seared that will not be silenced and will have the love of god coming out of that pure conscience the lord writes everything we have heard today on the table of everyone's heart in jesus name Let's now go to the Lord in prayer and be transparently sincere and uh, be steadfastly committed 
to all that God has revealed to us today. Please open your mouth and pray and pray sincerely and pray wholeheartedly and pray with concentration and pray with intelligence and pray in the spirit and let the word sink deep into your heart that the Lord will make a transformation the necessary transferable love that he ought to make tell the Lord is able and he will 